Let me make it clear that in 2012 and 2013, the administration of which I was a part inherited a national economic emergency, which so, so grave was the emergency. So grave was the emergency that the Prime Minister in the run-up to the 2011 elections told the country to expect bitter medicine, quote-unquote. The JLP government, he was promising everything from Castaray to Eucalyptus oil. It promised eucalyptus, but it was really castor oil in there. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the, 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 we inherited a situation in which the pre existing IMF standby agreement had, in reality, been abandoned. Jamaica had no access to international capital markets or domestic capital markets in the wake of a debt exchange. In the absence of the IMF seal of approval, multilateral institutions at that time, such as the World Bank, the European Union, and others were, and the IDB were not providing financing for Jamaica. You signed a loan and you got not one dollar drawdown. By 2013, the country's international reserves had slipped below internationally recognized minimum levels. No contracts, no, we had no program. That's what we were. But, but hear me now. Hear me now. Hear me now. Oh, the today, place. today, today, today for me, tomorrow for you. Today, I. <laughs> no, no. Dr. Phillips, please right. address the speaker. Please address me. Mr. I'm speaker. Stop them from addressing you. Mr. Speaker. All members on this side, <laughs> please allow the speaker to address Mr. Allow speaker. the member to address me. Mr. Speaker, when you throw a stone, or who ball or who it Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, there is no doubt about these facts, that by 2013 the country's international reserves had slipped below internationally recognized minimum levels. The primary surplus target, which was part of the program that had been entered into by that, by the administration led by that side, they had a target. People now talking about 7.5, we reduce it to 7. Their target was 5%. When we got into office, the outturn was 3%. Primary surplus target. It had been breached. No contracts were in place for not even one public sector worker. Not even one public sector worker at the time. No contracts. That was the national economic emergency that we inherited. Before the IMF would consider re-establishing a program for Jamaica, specific prior actions were required. Prior actions were required. And what were these, Mr. Speaker? A wage freeze? A wage freeze that had to be signed on to by 80% of the workers as a precondition 
that we had to do a second national debt exchange which required 95% of the creditors. We had to correct the fiscal imbalance. That is what took the year. We had to do all of those things as a precondition because the Jamaican authorities were not trusted. Mr. Speaker, we reached out to the stakeholders and they too recognized the danger to the country and bought into the program. The workers accepted the wage freeze without any striking. The creditors, including the pensioners, rescheduled their debts. And yes, the public endured serious revenue raising measures. I say, I say to all of these stakeholders, I say to them, thank you, the country owes you a debt of gratitude. Let us contrast that situation with the one we left in place when the jail, which the JLP government currently has benefited from. Relations with the international and local capital markets have been restored. We were, we, were not facing, we were not facing downgrades. They got an economy and a country getting successive upgrades. They had three years of balanced budgets. Inflation had been saved and was at its lowest level in almost 50 years. International reserves were healthy. The relationship with the IMF was restored. Jamaica was having, was had the record as the best country. Having the record from meeting its commitments of all the countries in a relationship with the fund. And more, and more, due to the work of Aris Daly and his team, 98% of the public sector workers had signed contracts with the government of Jamaica, and the wage fees had been abandoned. The simple truth is, Mr. Speaker, that the onerous tax package, which is part of this budget, has been forced onto the backs of the Jamaican people, is not caused by any national economic crisis. It is caused solely by the decision of the government of Jamaica, a decision rooted A decision rooted in an ill-conceived partisan political motive. The government, the government during the election can, campaign had promised to raise the tax threshold without any taxes. We said it couldn't be done and that it would cost 30 billion dollars of new taxes and that is the price the jamaican people are paying we are not against raising the tax threshold we raised it three times during our tenure at the wicked but it should be done without causing undue disruption either to the economic stability of the country or by imposing unnecessary hardships on the majority of the people.